What's up guys, Devin here from American Aquarium. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to this channel, this is a professional based channel where we take our experience with thousands of aquariums, the testing, the research, and put it into articles and videos for you guys to be able to learn and know how to take care of your aquariums best. If you're tuning into this video, clearly you're looking to learn more about sterilization, how it pertains to a saltwater aquarium. If you want to know the ins and outs about sterilization, of course we have more information and some in-depth articles and some other videos. We have some proprietary information based on the experience, different than the manufacturers, on how to achieve either clarification, level 1 sterilization, or level 2 based on the sterilizer clarifier that you have and the volume of water that you're trying to either clarify or sterilize. So this video is the use of a UV sterilizer on a saltwater aquarium, specifically to be able to control algae blooms and bacterial blooms. If you guys are not familiar with American Aquarium Products work and probably the reason that I feel qualified to make this video, we are one of the leaders and have been on the forefront of the use of a UV sterilizer. So we've had a lot of experience and then having this experience published online, we've been able to work with many hobbyists, higher level organizations, universities, corporations, and being able to install UV sterilizers on some major public aquariums. And another reason why I feel like I can even talk on this topic, I'll go ahead and post this now. If you guys can see in a popular forum here, Reef to Reef, um, a simple search of our UV sterilizer article, it's talked about heavily on socials. So we do have a major role in the use of UV sterilization for the saltwater hobby. So if you're unfamiliar with the sterilizing process, there is a clarification which just takes cloudy water or green water, clarifies it. There's a level one sterilization which is bacterial and then level two which is parasite harder stubborn virus control but there is some science to be able to achieve these things and of late there's been a lot of talk of can a uv sterilizer solve a hair algae issue remember that it is only able to zap the water as it's passing through the sterilizer so if something attaches to rock or the glass aquarium it's not passing through the sterilizer therefore it's not getting zapped. The first important aspect that we need to know when setting up an aquarium is that we need to have pre-filtration. A high bio load pre-filter. It's been proven from our research that if we don't have a bio filter in place, the UV sterilizer has to work twice as hard. So if we're using these manufacturers suggestions without a pre-filter in place the sterilizer is technically having to work twice as hard to remove the algae twice as hard to remove the bacteria or pests the pre-filter is going to collect the algae spores and the bacteria in that sponge whether we've already started our tank from new media or live media that sponge say for the duration of the new site for the new tank cycle say maybe eight weeks, that sponge is going to have, that pre-filter is going to have that eight weeks of collecting those spores and collecting that big bacteria. And do remember that sterilizers will affect a tank that doesn't have a strong bio load. So it's important to have these things in place. And then with the bio living in the filters, we can have the benefit of the UV sterilizer without it hurting our bacterial load. So this idea that I'm speaking of now is actually called water turbidity. This is the dissolved waste particles or the DOC that's actually in the water going through the sterilizer. So if we have a nice pre-filter, the amount of particulates that's in the water is much less. If we don't have a pre-filter, the amount of organics that's going through that sterilizer is greater. And then the sterilizer is having to work harder to zap that amount of particulates. If we can clean that water before it goes to the sterilizer, the sterilizer has a much greater effect on what is making through the sterilizer, zapping that algae or the bacteria and pests. But even as something as simple as the water socks can be a great filter to remove these spores. Let's remember guys, a UV sterilizer doesn't just remove 
algae spores. It enables the growth as it zaps it, and then these spores are floating in the aquarium and are going to get settled on something. So if we don't have the filtration to remove it, these spores will just settle. So it's pretty easy to get cloudy water control with a clarifier, sterilizer, but let's learn how to get hair algae control for a marine aquarium. These recommendations are specific to American Aquarium. 2.5 to three times per hour is generally all is needed for hair algae control in a marine aquarium. Assuming that you have a professional grade UV and a pre-filter is in place. However, it's usually recommended that we have a six times per hour turnover to have this hair algae control. These recommendations are usually not based on experience or even consultation of a mentor. This is noteworthy because with a professional grade sterilizer, we can run the sterilizer at a parasite control slower flow rate, but also get hair algae control. It would normally be said that we have to have a much higher flow to get this hair algae control. And then we're not able to get the parasite control because our water is going too fast. Remember it comes down to contact time with the UV sterilizer. We want the water to be able to sit on the lamp at a certain pace to either be zapping that algae, bacteria, or parasites. So having this professional grade sterilizer hooked up the correct way is better than spending more than what is needed to, uh, to go after an issue that may not, it may not be solving as well, or even having to have two sterilizers on the aquarium, one running at a slow flow rate, one running at a fast one running at a fast flow rate. Okay, so here's the things that we have to have in check to make sure we're hooking up our sterilizer correct to our marine aquarium. Again, I talked about a pre-filter, which is low turbidity. This adds to the overall healthy biofilter, but then also there's less organics going through that sterilizer. Obviously, we have to have the correct flow rate. Look at our recommendations for our flow based on real world designs. We then have to have the correct dwell time, which relates to the flow rate. We have to have a minimum water turnover, which is interesting. So we have to have the correct flow, but we also have to be turning that body of water over so many times. Because multiple passes means more times for things to, like the spores and the bacteria to go through that sterilizer, repeatedly getting zapped. We need to make sure that our UV sterilizer has a correct distance from the UV lamp and the outer wall of the sterilizer chamber. As in, if we have a sterilizer that has a really wide chamber, the water closer to the sterilizer is getting zapped more, the water further away from the sterilizer is getting zapped less. So we want a professional grade sterilizer that's gonna have a correct size chamber, which is gonna keep the water closer to that lamp. And of course, we wanna make sure the temperature going through that sterilizer is correct. The only other thing I want to talk about is actually what makes a UV sterilizer so great for an aquarium. It's so often talked about for the use of clarification for bacteria and green water and now hair algae control and then parasite and bacterial issues, virus issues. But what we need to be talking about is how the UV sterilizer actually boosts the immunity of fish by eliminating the oxidization that's happening in the aquarium which is constantly wearing out the fish's immunity. We always have a greater amount of oxygenization in this hobby. Everything that we put in the aquarium, fish food, the fish waste is an oxidizer. And so we want to either focus on having reducers um, or eliminating those oxygenizations, which a UV sterilizer does great. This oxygenization that I'm just talking about, we can even see in the ocean of why corals are dying. We can measure this simply in a pH, but when we have a greater amount of oxygenization, then that's when the corals are dying. And what I'll also go into is that the UV sterilizer is usually talked about for fish health. So we talk about the quarantine process and that um, how the UV sterilizer benefits the fish, um, which is true. And so for that reason, we wanna have the UV sterilizer for the fish. I like to take this conversation even a step further and say that a UV sterilizer is even great for plants and corals. 
Okay, if we're taking away the oxygenization, then the plants and the corals are not having to deal with it as well. And therefore, it is making it so they're not struggling. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. I just wanted to give you some more information how we recommend using a UV, a true UV sterilizer on a marine aquarium. Of course, get one, guys. When you consider the price of fish, a couple fish, you're already at the price of a sterilizer. And take a look at our recommendations of what sterilizer to use. Uh, we understand cost could be an issue sometimes, so that's why another reason why we recommend what we recommend. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen and watch. If you hung in to the end of this video, I really appreciate you guys. You're superstars. Uh, if you can, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll talk to you guys next time. All right.